Everybody, welcome. Today's class is part of our 10 minute stretch series and we're gonna focus on hips and low back, an area I know that uh, many of us needs a little bit more love and attention. So I have a block and a blanket that I'm sitting up on. A couple of pillows or throw pillows will work really well for that too. We'll use the block later on and the blanket or a pillow is just nice sometimes to sit on and give your hips a little bit of height so you don't feel crunched in. So grab what you need and we'll get started. Okay, so we'll start sitting up on the blanket, maybe a pillow. A great way to know if you need it is when you're sitting on the ground, if everything feels a little hunched in, a little height under your hips can help that. And then whatever feels like a good cross-legged seat, I'm gonna start with left shin in front, just so maybe we're both on the same side. Okay, and then you're just gonna start with some big circles, right? Like you're moving your hips around the numbers on the clock. I often find it's nice to get a little bit of mobility, get the joints warmed up before we ask our bodies to hold in a more static or a stationary stretch. Really lean in side to side. We get that whole range of motion around the hips, which you're gonna work a little bit of today from back of the hips, sides, and the front. But then come back to center, sit tall, and from here start to walk your hands forward. And that might be right here, and you feel plenty in hips or low back or just start to walk forward until it feels like the right amount of stretch for you. I like to use my hands then to press traction down and forward so you can anchor the hips back. Let the hips just feel rooted and connected. Stay long and open through the front body. It's easy to feel like you're just hunching forward, okay, but keep your torso long. We'll create some length in our spine. And then you can just soften the chest forward a little without feeling like you're hunched forward. Just notice where you're feeling some sensation, side to side, outer hips versus low back. The two are very connected. So sometimes hard to work one without affecting the other. Great, walk your hands back. And then switch the leg that's in front. We tend to often sit and habitually always one side or the other, so this gives a little bit of balance. And then you're just gonna start to take those big hip circles, but in the opposite direction. Sometimes your brain has to think about it a little bit more when we switch. You know, we usually move in a, in a pattern. And just as you change sides, where does it change sensation? Where do you notice things differently side to side? Just that awareness can be so beneficial. Then come back to center and sit tall. So we're gonna keep this length in the spine as you come forward. Right? Hands might come right out in front or walk a little bit further. Whenever you get to your stopping point, press into your hands. Right, and then imagine you could traction them forward and let the hips sink back. Let's see if that shifts or changes anything. Keep even your feet active so you're pressing through the outer edges of your feet. Right, like we've done in these other stretch series, really engaging the muscles around what we're stretching so that it's supported. Okay, with a long spine, then maybe the center of your chest can soften a little bit more. You may even just play with what does it feel like? How is it different from that long spine versus just <laughs> hunching forward? What do you feel on this side? Right, it's okay to notice. I just I always invite people try to let go of judgment, right? We tend to talk about good side, bad side, tight side, just awareness. They're just different. Come all the way back up. Great. And then take your right leg out long to the side and bring your left heel in. So you're in this half butterfly and then right leg extended. Okay, sit tall. 
turn your shoulders towards your right leg. Take a hand on either side. Okay, then I just like to press a little bit more into the right hand so you start to get a little bit more twist. Okay, like we've been doing, keep your spine long and then start to walk your hands forward. Right, forward is always relative. That might be pretty upright. For some people, that's your forehead to your shin. We're all just built differently. Stay flexed through your feet. Press down through your right heel and the outer edge of your left foot. Right. You might even take your left hand to your outer right leg. It's just going to give you a little bit more twist. Try not to push or force. Just let the hold there create a little traction. All right, so we went maybe from a little bit more in the back and the outer hip to this and crest of the hip the side of the hip as we come forward in the twist. So we get a little range of motion with the twist and some opening with the hips. Couple breaths. And then come all the way back up and just switch. Left leg out, right heel in. Right, feet engaged, and then press down to whatever's connecting to the ground. Turn towards your right hand on either side. Press just a little bit more into your left hand. Find the twist. A long spine, and then start to walk forward wherever that stopping point is. Right. And then that same option here, maybe you take the left hand, oh, your right hand, and bring it to your outer left leg. And as you do that, lengthen your forehead towards your toes. Twist your outer right ribs down. And then your back hip might lift a little, that's fine, it often does here. Just see if you can keep it heavy. Right, so that traction creates a little bit more space. Drop low back, outer hip. Good work. <laughs> Come all the way back up to center. Let's bring both legs in. We're going to come down onto our backs. Grab your block organ. You can just stack up a couple of pillows for this one. All we really need to do is elevate the hips a little bit off the ground. Right, so once you come all the way down, lift your hips, slide your block or your pillows in underneath. And you want to have it nice and low so that it is really up underneath the hips. It's out of the lower back. Okay. Bend your knees, feet to the ground, and then bring your right foot in towards your chest, your right knee in towards your chest. You can take a hold behind the thigh or in the front of the shin, whatever feels good there. Okay, flex feet. And then just let your arms get heavy so it's drawing the thigh in towards your belly. Some options here, you could stay right here. You might already just feel some good stretch in the leg where you can start to straighten your left leg long. It might come part way, it might come all the way to straight, just move it in that direction. And then you might notice a little bit more sensation in the front of the left hip. Again, activating feet helps to activate all the way up the legs and into the hips. So legs heavy, arms heavy. And then one thing I think can be nice to explore here is the angle of the right knee. It might come straight in towards your chest. It might angle out slightly towards your armpit. And you just get into a little different area in front of the hip. Just see what feels most effective for you today. You can also really lengthen out through your left heel. Okay, press the left heel away to activate the stretch. Take a couple of breaths there. 
The front of our hip, our hip flexors and our low back are so connected as a unit. So getting some space here can often be really beneficial for the low back. Okay, and then slowly slide your right heel back in. No, left heel, bring both feet to the ground, right to left some days, and then switch sides. So left leg in, take a hold, chin, thigh, whatever works, flex your foot. And then stay with right knee bent or start to extend. And you'll find pretty natural stopping point as you listen to your body. Flex both feet. And really press out through your right heel. It's one of those movements where it's not going to change. Right? It's not going like, to really change the position of the leg, but the engagement can create a difference with the sensation. And then see where your left knee wants to land here. So is it straight in? Is it out? Even if it's an inch or two towards the armpit, it might make a difference. Keep your shoulders in the back of your head, just resting. They don't need to work here. Sometimes you can get a little to the inner thigh in this one. The hips, the low back, that whole circumference of the hips all work so much together. You can work all these different angles of the hips and really beneficial also then for the lower back. Kind of bring your right heel back in, bring both feet to the ground. Lift your hips, slide the pillow, the block out, whatever you've got, and then just take your feet a little wider, let your knees rest together. This constructive rest pose, nice way to give your low back a little space. Yeah, take a couple breaths. I'll leave you here. Hope you enjoyed this 10 minutes for the hips and low back. I'll see you in the next one.